actually kill the first blood, which won't come their way just yet. Mook's about to wear off, so they're actually going to get spotted by this observer ward. Yep. Hot and I will note that the smoke has been used, and this observer ward, very nice observer ward, will block Chen's big spawn and give great vision. Chen's often going to have to have to use a smoke early if he wants to be able to gank effectively. So it looks like it will be... Ooh, they're actually sitting on the high ground, so... Lanem and Ice Ice Ice. This ward, doesn't, this ward is on the low ground. It does not see them right now. Yes. Whereas they see Pilot Die, they also see his boots, so getting an initiation on him is not going to be easy. The Maybe a concussive shot begins. already been leveled up. Pilot Die. He does not want to walk forward at he all. He sees the rune, though. Oh, it's going to be a bait. He's going to walk right at the Skyrath Mage. Skyrath Mage pretends to back off, but the loop de loop is coming. Ice 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 time walks in. There's Lamb with the Blade Free. First Blood will be picked up by the Dota Kings. Lamb on the support Last Juggernaut. They didn't even bother to skill Disruption, but very smart move from DK. <laughs> 400 gold! <laughs> That's four centuries. Wow. <laughs> That's some serious hate for this Chen. That is serious hate. I, I clicked Lamb, like, wait, Lamb got first blood, where does gold go? I'm like, alright, Korea, four centuries, let's go! <laughs> what? What on earth? That's cool. Envy, not happy with the hotkey setup and we'll... Soaring recipe for him. He actually pulled some people some tangos, so that's kind of cool. And <laughs> yeah, they're just looking to shut down Aoi's Chen at all costs, but Aoi isn't even going to that lane. He's going to the opposite jungle. And hes they've actually blocked their own spawn too. Not only for Chen, but also for the Doombringer. So Burning will be left in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Aoi, what creeps are available to him? There is a Centaur at his first camp, and another Centaur at the big camp, so he's looking good. Well, Pilot Eye has boots to kind of somewhat deal with any aggression, but the Chen does not. So if Chen gets scouted, Juggernaut can just go chase him out and even go for kills potentially with his boots blade fury, so... AUI has to be pretty careful with his... He is very yeah. careful. <laughs> this positioning is... Like, as cautious as it gets. Luckily for AUI, Zeke finds a centaur in the medium camp. Why Otherwise... is Bone 7 not eating that creep? I thought he was going to eat the Harpy's Stormcraft. Harpy's value. Burning throws a just casual storm hammer at the top lane and will be on his merry way, so... Lamb and MMY just team jungling. They'll scout at the fact that the medium camp is missing and maybe put two and oh, two Oh, they're going to find Aoi! Oh, man. His positioning's They don't good. have spin. Oh, they have it. 10 seconds, they're pinging, they see what's going on, they know it's there. Can Burning cut him off? Burning does he not have, have mana though, he's got a war cry though, there's your concussive shot. This looks like a kill to me. War cry through, AUI will tango on through, but he's got no boots, he's got no way out. The Centaur stun could help him out, nope, sorry. Takes a Harpy before he dies, and well that Harpy will maybe be able to apply some damage here. But that's all it's going to do. Two early kills go to the roaming Juggernaut. Still Shadow Demon kind of left by his lonesome, not really able to do that much for his Ice 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 too. He's not getting zoned out, he does have a stout shield working towards that Pro Man shield and DK off to the races in the early game. Regen Rune gets found out by MMY, so he gets back up to full mana. He's gone for Ancient Silk Concussive Shot for now. He where he looks to transition from there, but now Bone 7 is forced out of the top lane. And does solve his own jungle. Jug with all these sentries, what's the plan with this? Like, he's got... Four sentries hasn't really blocked many camps. I, I think he wanted to block Chen, but he didn't know where Chen was. He's also going to be spending a lot of time blocking Ancients, maybe. Uh, probably worried about some ancient stacking for the Tinker, and that's exactly where Doom is Radiant's headed right now. Tower is under attack. Says, oh, hello, Observer Ward. Also, hello, Bone 7. Can he kill this in time? The Harpy's there doing a lot of damage. Lamb wants this. We'll get it. Throw Sun Healing Ward and will run away with this, taking heavy damage. The Hadouken comes out as well, but that's the end of Bone Seven's mana. Lamb getting burnt to pieces, and there's 20 HP left on him. He's not going to escape this one, it looks like. Trying to block with the Healing Ward. He Blade Fury is out. The Harpy going to block his way, and one more zap will be the death of Lamb, it looks like. Down he goes. Chen gets the last hit. Getting a bit too greedy there, going for the D Ward. Harpy OP. He yeah. does block the spawn, though. It's it's somewhat of a trade. Like he dewards and he. I think, I think it's form. worth it because he. The opportunity cost for Bone Seven yeah. too. Uh, Bone Seven wasted time. I mean, Bone Seven ends up getting some golden XP off of it. I mean, not a big amount, but. I think it's not a, by no means like a, a really like oh my god he just he just died like it's not like a normal like kill where you get picked off. Well, so. Chen can also do anything too. He still has a yep. Harpy Cream and he's harassing a little bit, but he's, at the same time he's, he's still stacking, level one. He's, not really doing too much. He's going to come and try stack this big camp, I imagine. Or is he going to just take the creep? I think he needs to start doing some stacks, and that's what he's in position to do. Normally, you see AUI at like five, six minutes in, he's like level five. Like, he's one of the fastest Chen farmers in the game, but he's not had the opportunity to do that this uh -oh, game. Oh, I said I four stacks. 
but, oh, but level seven. one poison. Happy's still causing issues for DK. Alright, so taking a step back, like burning, farming pretty well top lane. All three core heroes for DK. Two are getting farm, and Ice 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 in the off lane getting enough out of the off lane. Like he's gonna have level six in a decent time, so. I think it's super important that DK taking C9 out of the comfort zone. What they want to do, stack, get Blink Dagger on uh, Brewmaster, get BOT Blink Dagger on Tinker, and then really start their game. But they're just playing so greedily and drafting so greedily, and DK is not letting get it, not letting them get away with one bit of it. Well, here we go, top lane. Bone 7 does have two points in the Scorch Earth, as well as the Unholy Aura regen. So 4 HP regen a second, combined with potential additional from the Scorch Earth. Meanwhile, there's actually a gank on mid lane, Ice 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 with Mushi gets the kill there while the T1 tower is being sieged and Cloud9 got distracted top, they rotated three heroes top, exposed their mid lane Brewmaster and Sing Sing gets brought down before he can even hit level 6, so... Early kill going the... well another early kill going the way of DK and... And now Battle Trance is up too if they want to siege this tower. Ooh, yeah. Already below 200 HP, so... The problem surmount for Cloud9 here. Tinker, still last, highest last hits, already soul ring up and able to pressure Ice Ice decently. There are no stacks for him to work with, but he still get his BOTs at a reasonable clipping when Skywrath and Juggernaut are all the way on yeah. the opposite side of the map. The other reason you want all these sentries is to block the jungle, not just from the Chen, but from the Tinker. Tinker can farm all three neutral camps at the same time using March, so later on you want to try block as many of these neutral camps as possible, maybe using these sentry wards for the jug, because he's still holding on to them, so... He spent a lot of money on this, but end of the day, it'll eventually come in use in, in, in some way for the uh, blocking of camps. Well, C9 has to use Sentry Wars too. They wasted a Sentry Ward yeah. and they, there's gold down the sink too, it didn't even block anything. And it looks like DK going up for round two on this tower. Glyph is still up, but they aren't in position to defend. Looks like Bone 7 may be trying to wrap around. There is a double damage. He does have a decent amount of armor. He has five armor. He, I don't know if he wants to go running in and try man fight though. Not against Battle Trance <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, God Strain. He's gonna go for the Deny with the DD Rune though. I don't know, I think they can just straight kill him. Hey, you better yeah. be scared. Ernie pops the ultimate and uh, with that, actually it's gonna be Pile I Die. He silenced up, they're not gonna go for any kills over this. Probably could have here. Meanwhile in the mid lane, Cloud9 tried to find Mushi in the mid, but not gonna succeed in doing so, but... I think DK could have almost got a kill on top lane if they really want to get aggressive there. Mushi swings in, gets down an observer at top ice, lane. Ice, ice, ice with the Chronosphere on bottom. Wow. Will finish off his Solo kills Envy. Well, oh, that, that's really devastating for Cloud9. Here comes Mushi at the top lane, and you're looking for a solo kill on Cloud9. He hasn't even got mana for the disruption. Now Bone 7 gets stunned up as well. This is going from bad to worse for the Cloud9 team. DK the ones with the unorthodox draft, which is normally something you would say of Cloud9. We saw some very weird picks, especially when they were in China at WPC, picking Spirit Breakers, picking stuff all over the place. But here at TI4, it's attack. DK with a very peculiar set of five heroes. And well, coming I out just on top didn't of really like the SD pick in the draft. I think Chen is okay, but they need another like Dyer's very aggressive hero. Shadow Demon attack. and Chen haven't been together the whole entire game. And if they want to play defensively, then there are a better defensive heroes, like let's say Venomancer, they, uh, especially against four melee heroes, and just Plague Ward everywhere, get a lot of vision and slow them down. But Shadow Demon Pilot is 0 2 and 0. He did get off to a very bad start, giving me up first blood, but still, he's just running around the map no, no. a miss, not knowing what to do. Boy's got his treads up, 500 gold on top of that, and he's off to a great start as well. The solo kill on the Tinker, he's got Chronosphere again in 40 seconds. He'll be looking for more kills and to keep on being as aggressive as possible. So DK, I don't think they're going to let up, not by any means, anytime soon. They do give Lamb an empty lane for a little bit here. They want him to hit his level 6, because once he has Omni Slash, his solo killing potential uh, skyrockets. And going to see Mushi rotate out of the mid lane. Has a haste ring as well as phase boots, and hey, he finds a Chen Creep. So this is some... Easy free money going his way. Axie, whoa! Nice send back from AUI. Easy free money turns into hard, dirty money and can be taken back to the base by AUI, so. It reminds me of uh, Fnatic Draft where they use the lies, the Chen and the Tinker. When Tinker gets really big, they send him back, they blink in, blow up some button, and then get sent back home. BOT's right back in. Yeah. So it's kind of cool, but you have to get there. And step one isn't even there. Tinker, no BOT's. BOT is no no blink, no no Dagon. There's there's a lot more to go in he, these steps. He can kill him again. Ice 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 does have his Chronosphere back up. This ward top lane as well, that Mushi planted earlier, just out of the sentry ward range in the top lane. 
This, oh, this nice. gives such great vision in the top lane. It's a very common ward spot where this sentry is to put a ward somewhere here, but DK oh, this ward mixing also it up sees a little the tower. bit. Man, it's a value ward. Yeah, you can see most TPs. You could TP behind the tower, but... Get great vision, General. Ice Ice Ice, another Chronosphere coming out. This time AUI double bash inside the Chronosphere. Even without the RNG, he probably gets that solo kill. The Battle Trance helps him out and... Easy peasy for Ice Ice Ice. Yeah, it's really cool that they can have their offlaner solo kill people at this point. It's not even solo kill people, he can solo kill almost anyone. With the battle trance helping out, he gets the tinker, he they're just maybe smoking mid, but... Lana might actually take a doom up. Smoke gets pop. Lana knows something fine, yeah. something's wrong. You've got to get the Doom before he... Oh, I guess you can use it after the Blade Fury, but bottom lane, they're going to try and defend this one. Brewmaster TP's in. He still doesn't blink. When Sing Sing gets Blink Dagger, that's really the timing for Cloud9 to that's try right and get now. some kills. Yeah. BOTs are up for Eternal Envy. Okay. So now they can try and recoup some of the economic loss that they've suffered in the first 10 minutes of the game. 4,000 gold lead for DK, but it's a new ball game once Tinker has those booties. You know, it is, but at the same time, he kind of wants to farm off of it, I feel. He doesn't have the Radiant's immortal gem, or immortal item. I'm actually a little bit surprised. It is- I'm guessing by choice. Yeah, to me, it's like Probably a bit distracting. I, I prefer the the old one. If I, I don't like the sound difference. Yeah. I think if the, it was the same sound and the same visual effects, I would like it, but since it has a different sound, I'm like, eh. It's kind of like a sniper and his rifle. I don't like the new sound of that. Well, DK has snuck their way into Roshan here, and that's an easy Roshan. Max. Uh, well, only one level of fervor, looks like Juggernaut, only one point of healing ward, but with a DD, super easy. No problem at all, and it's DK. Point booster already completed for Lamb, so he's going to be rushing an Aghanim Scepter. As a support Juggernaut, it's a great item to have, because it can increase your damage output, even without having damage items on top of it, so... Did they change fervor scaling? Didn't it used to be like 2, 3, 4, 5 max hits, you get like X, uh, attack speed, now it scales attack speed? Dyer's I... middle tower is hmm. under attack. This is, it's, it's been tweaked a few times. I, I can't tell you for sure on that. DK, okay, they're poised to take this bottom tier 1 tower. They've got lamps smoked up, just camping behind the tower and waiting for someone to TP and show up on this. And now Eternal Envy actually farming the opponent's jungle, but they're losing their Dyer's T1s middle in the process. Well, Sing Sing is looking to go for this T1 tower. He actually doesn't have a TP Radiant's scroll, so with that in mind, I think DK attack. just getting a free tier 1 bottom, but. Trading for a tier 1 mid, not exactly the best exchange. Boy gets another solo kill this on Envy! He's trying to find the enemy jungle and Ice 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 finds him out and it's been a, a sad, sad day for this Tinker. What's so strong? Envy picks up his second death of the game, both solo kills to Ice Ice Ice, although, to be fair, Battle Trance does come into play Radiant's here and there. Sven, Midas up. Cool items. Yeah. Genuine the fear maker. He's instilling fear in all of all of Cloud9 right now. I mean, he hasn't you know, really joined any fights. He's just been sieging towers in the meantime. Once he has God Strength and Battle Trance and hitting any of those heroes, I guess technically they can kind of dodge it with Drunken Haze or Cyclone or Boulder. But right now, DK overpowering Cloud9. They just have to not have to say goodbye so many times. So. Highlight die. Goodbye, Seth. Doesn't even get this defensive disruption off. Gets a free kill. Here comes the Ancient's Jack as well. They block it off and then follow up by taking the double stack set there. And how do you... You can't really contest this. You blink in with, with Brew and you... Uh, they have to use Brew ultimate. It's 13 minutes yeah. in. It's risky to do, but I feel like Cloud9 need to go for a risky play right now. The problem is you could get insta silenced by Skywrath. If you go for a clap, you may get silenced. Yes. If you don't go for a clap, you don't have the damage to kill anyone. That's true. I feel like he, he's not getting kills unless he uses clap, and to Dyer's do so... Well, they attack. also could use like a defensive disruption during a silence. Yeah, that's true. But the... Shadow Demon just died. They're I guess, just not on the same page, this game. They're letting Envy die far Look too often. Look at Envy. Look, 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 he's, just... <laughs> he's trying to farm this next creep wave coming uh... Man, so cheeky. But he it's... went all the way over here he's just like, to He's like, this is the safest place to farm. Well... Can't spell efficiency without the two E's, I tell you that. Colonel MD gonna get the double march down. Needs to TP ASAP and I look to do so right after the double march comes out, so. Sneaky play from him. AUI will deward the ancients to make sure it respawns for the Tinker, but hey, team that may just get taken out. Cloud9 has smoked up, trying to go to the gonna omni slash him? Oh barely. Almost finds Chen there with the D ward, but uh 
Cloud9 smoke is gonna redirect away from the sanctuary. This is Pilot Die completely alone. He gets an observer down. Bernie gets scared. When he sees a shadow demon, he's like, that's not a shadow demon who's alone, but Radiant turns out, yes power. it was. And attack. they do ward the opponent's jungle, so Ice Ice, or sorry, Eternal Envy will perhaps get some space to farm, but Dyer's it's been a very slow early game for Eternal Radiant's Envy. Usually you'll see Tinkers Radiant's with Blink by this point, fallen. and he's actually pretty close, all things considered. Yeah. His, actual, his farm is actually is not attack. that bad. It's... Structures are fortified. He was a safe lane farming Tinker, so to be fair, he shouldn't have a attack. decent time on it, but he's also a lot of the team battle player. friends. <laughs> well, nine kills to one, DK just seemed to have Cloud9's number right now. Cloud9 Dyer's are going to work on another tier one tower, their second tower of the game, but for DK, this draft has just worked once for them. The roaming juggernaut has fallen. almost has an Acceptor, 500 gold for Lamb, and he's got Acceptor. He won't even be level 11. And again, DK. Steal the Ancients and then block it. This is just their go-to. You want to deward it? Well, we'll kill it and then de block it once again, so... Everything. It's like DK has been... Dyer's very focused and well-versed in how to deal with the Tinker. Shut him down early, they got a free kill on him with Ice as Ice and the battle trench from Mushi, and then just completely shut down his Ancients the whole yep. entire game and slowed down his farm enough so that you can end the game in 30 to 35 minutes without him getting any big items. Ghost Scepter is phenomenal here. It does. It, the only thing it doesn't block is Skyrath Maze Burst, but Troll, Void, and Sven can't really do that much against it. And he will... Uh, I mean, he can eventually get to that point, but I don't think DK is just giving him any quarter, any room to breathe, and any farm. But I do get some nice times up on some of their supporting casts. Sing Sing, uh, sorry, not Sing Sing, Doom gets his Blink Dagger up, and AUI gets his mech, so... They've got the initiation from Bone7, and they've got the mech kill from AUI, which could help out a little bit in these fights, but... You're still playing from behind. One good Chronos here from Ice 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 will set up so much damage up, but then Ice 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 is farmed. At this point, he's effectively, at least to some extent, a carry here. He's got Mask of Madness, picks up a Mithril Hammer, and we could be seeing a fast Maelstrom come out from the Faceless Void. Yeah, he's number three in Noworth. He's above the Tinker at this point, so the three melee heroes on DK that aren't Chuggernaut are just super, super stacked. And Burning also went for a Greedy build, too, with the Midas. So, man, yeah. two Mask of Madnesses and Battle Trance? That physical deeps. And DK just playing so cautiously. Burning actually does have a Blink Dagger up on top of all this, so... Lana also has a Scepter! He's huge. He's, he's level 9 as well. Like, this this poor guy, he's got the Ag Scepter, but he's got just a level 1. I guess it does jump to 6 jumps, so it's still... Uh, well, basically, cooldown, effectively too. a level 11. The yeah. cooldown is really big from level 1 to Scepter. Yes. Yeah, 70 second cooldown, that's Yeah, I think it's one, like useful. one, Dyer's like, top over, top over around 100 attack. seconds or something, base. Yeah. Even two minutes or something. Attack. Yeah, it's a it's really long. long. Well, Cloud9 now, trying to see GT2, but here come DK smoked up. They'll bypass this Observer Ward here and get straight to the action here. AUI hiding fairly well in the trees. He's going to focus out. Sixteen gets the ulti off for the four. The Chronosphere comes out, and Envy going to cop an Omni Slash here. That's an Aghanim's Omni Slash, the Blade Fury there as well, but the Boots of Travel give him the movement speed he needs to escape. Ice 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 doomed up, trying to battle his way through the trees. He gets brought down. Not a bad fight for Cloud9 to show far. Bucci now getting stunned up here as well. But the, uh, there comes your Skyrath, your Mystic Blade doing big damage. Gets one kill for DK. DK going to chase on and see what more they can find, but it's not too much here as Cloud9 get out. Very good ultimate by Sing Sing. If he doesn't pop his ultimate yeah. there, he will immediately die. Didn't get greedy, didn't wait around for a silence from Skyrath or the Chronosphere. Multiple things that could have effectively stopped it and I think it's I mean for Ice 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 that's the right play to go for. You see that Brewmaster, you try Chronosphere instantly and burst him down. Because that's the only way Cloud9 can win a fight, but Basis Void also gets away with five of the from SP, so economic okay. damage not even done to DK's Basis Void. 7500 gold lead for DK, Roshan gonna respawn in what, 30 seconds to two and a half. Um, yeah, uh, next, sometime in the next three and a half minutes. I think Burning also needs BKB. Just because of the Panda ultimate. Panda, he just Cyclones Burning, and there goes your God Strength. And looking at Envy now, like he's got 1k gold, Boots of Travel, Blink. He's still en route to being a pretty formidable Tinker this and game. Doom has Blink and Midas. The Bone 7. Slow start, but slow start's good for Doom. Or at least a 0 0 0 start, but he's 0 1 and 2. Yeah, and Midas Devour Gold means you'll, you'll get back to power pretty quickly. DK have got the kind of backup plan, which is where Burning did go for a Midas of his own on the spend, but. 
The Blink Dagger slows down any of your big damage items, your BKB Daedalus type items that come a bit later, so... We'll see him pick up an Ogre Club now, so he says, I'll get the BKB first and the Daedalus later. As Void finishes off a Maelstrom of his own, so... Ice 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 can solo kill people, that to me is the really scary thing right now. With Battle Trance, these items, Mask of Madness and Maelstrom, he can just be off farming on his own. If he ever sees anyone who he feels is also on their own, he just goes for the solo kill with Chronosphere. Eternal Envy has to feel so scared in this game. He is probably priority number two in their Chronosphere. How fast the Red Champ respawn was. Oh wow. That was Instant near instantaneous. DK already in there and will secure themselves in Aegis and... I, mean, I think whether it was a, like, a really fast one or a long one, either way DK get Aegis, but this just means the next Roshans to follow will also come even sooner. So it's just more gold steadily flowing towards Team DK and just keeping up momentum in their favor. And we see Mushi TP to top lane. They were looking for a Blink Doom on anybody but Mushi. Uh, they're gonna go for it. They're happy just to blow the Aegis maybe, but can they even kill him once? He's got mech, he's so tanky. It can't actually pop it until the Doom wears off, and he's trying to just chase him down, make sure they don't go for those TPs, but one TP is there. Meanwhile, Ice Ice Ice, Cronus, he kills off Sing Sing, he wants AUI as well, and he'll get him. One bash, two bash, down goes your Chen. The Doom at top lane was effectively useless, and Ice 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 is going to just clean up some of these Chen creeps, perhaps. No, what a ridiculous... You're they see Tinker? And then why? Gets blown up, Ice 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 is going to go on the chase here, not going to find Tinker right off the bat, and Tinker has to be a little bit careful. Nice, nice high ground kill by Sing Sing. Putting himself a little bit of danger, but faces Void, no Chrono up, he feels relatively safe. I'm so actually surprised they gave the... they gave Mushi the Aegis. I don't think he's as important as other heroes. I guess maybe they they don't want to risk him dying in a high ground push because he is their mech bear and a significant source of damage due to Battle Trance. Double damage! He's got 3.5k gold, so when he picks up his next item, he's going to suddenly become one of the, the key damage dealers. The DK. Maybe even just goes for something like a BKB if he wants to stay as kind of the initiator slash high ground siege that he is right now. And he, over in the ancients is stacking and finally has picked up an ultimate ult, so we will be seeing a first item side of vice. We've seen Tinkers sort of lean towards more often the Dagon and Eblade builds. You feel this is a, a good game to go back for the side of vice over the Dagon build? I think Ghost Scepter would be nice for him, but at the same time they aren't gonna get any kills. And they need damage. They have Doom and they have Brew Ult, but those don't actually do that much damage. So it depends on what they're trying to aim for. Are they trying to mitigate losses or are they trying to actually kill people? So I think they're too far behind to try and blink around and kill people and I would say like maybe Ghost Scepter into Scythe of Ice might be a better build. But Scythe of Ice. It's it's a safe build for sure. Yeah. And like Juggernaut, you aren't gonna be able to kill him. He has a scepter, he has Blade Fury, he has Healing Ward, Burning, he has BKB, so Dagon pretty useless for And Faces Void, you don't usually want to be anywhere close to him, so I think it's okay. All right, well, we'll see DK now. Siege towers one by one. The last out of tower remaining of the top lane is full HP, but it's also not long for this world as Envy just off trading farm Elter on the map. He's pressuring this bottom lane by clearing it out. This T1 bottom tower is around half HP, and DK will get a T2 top and maybe just see them back off to defend. Unless they want to try and breach high ground, they've got the Aegis in hand still for another three minutes, so with Battle Trance, they definitely can consider going for a high ground push. Yeah, Battle Trance is like a mad madness barrel team without any downsides. It just increases their damage output so significantly. And not only is it just good for killing people, it's also really good for taking down objectives because physical damage is how you take down towers, not magical, unless you have Pug. But aside from that, it's usually just a straight physical damage. And they can bring down objectives, bring down Roshan in a matter of seconds. We'll see this. Bottom T1 continue to be pressured. Envy really Dyer's wants this T1. He's gonna come in and poke holes at it, and hey, this T1 getting Dyer's brought down to nine range it is, and here come the rotations. Void is looking for him, not gonna throw a Chronos here. No, he wants to get the tower tonight. Chen oh, almost gets it with the Wild Ring Ripper. Will lose his creep in the process, but. SSS secures the tower tonight, which is pretty important when you're this far behind Cloud9, every bit of gold does count. I'm surprised that Chen's managed to fall a mech and a uh, successful whisper this time with the amount of pressure that's been brought out. 
Ouch. Keep, keep into that one. Get this. There's a blink on your jug too. <laughs> Lamb is... He's up there. Like, same farm as the Brewmaster. Not far behind the, like, Doom Tinker as well. And that's an MKB, so Troll probably not going to beat a Cyclone target, which means that he's probably going to be Drunken Haze, and yep. that means that you don't even have to worry about Drunken Haze anymore, or Laser for that matter. Cool build. Ice 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 was kind of lurking at bottom lane, wait, hoping, well Tinker's already dead, so you're not really waiting for Tinker to TP and hoping that maybe someone else shows up, but... What we have from now, Concussive shot at top, and here comes rotation. Mushi's coming in from the side, and he's gonna run right into Pylai Die as well as Bone 7. The is available, but Bone 7, I think he's just gonna leave his buddy. Pylai Die can't really be protected here. Shadow Demon, good. By a Chen Ultimate, but. At least Sven's out of mana. Though so they can't really do that much without Sven mana. They can't push Hangar with that. Yeah. The uh, God Strength as well will be. Oh, Scepter Doom. Why? Why Scepter? Especially when you're behind. I mean, it gives him some good stats to tank up a bit, but. Shiva's would be a lot better, I think. They have so much physical damage that. Sh uh, I guess Shiva's actually doesn't do that much because they have Battle Trance, so maybe AC instead. Even. I don't know. Like, I guess BKB is not. It's not a good game for BKB because there's so much physical damage as well, so. Yeah, I'd say AC is the best option for him. Halberd's not terribly great versus Avoid. Asian not working inside. MKB's already being picked up as well, so... Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see uh, DK. They've got complete map control. All towers are down. Isis has walks into this one. Does not get anything off before he gets doomed up, and that's a... A freebie gifted to Cloud9 in some pretty sparkly wrapping paper, and... Cloud9 will happily take that one, as they're still clawing to try to get themselves back into this game. Eternal Envy struggling to get a Scythe of Ice, 2,500 gold on him, and he can't really afford to buy it, because if he dies on Chrono, they need him to buy, for buyback to um, hold the high ground. And looking at the next Roshan, which will have the Aegis and the Cheese, it's like two minutes until the earliest possible one, so Isis Ice's death won't really cost them that much, and he's searching for easy targets such as Eternal Envy. Yeah, I think for Ice 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 dying there is like, well, it's a, it's kind of like his role is to go looking around for these solo kills, so if he finds someone farming by himself, he chronos, he gets a solo kill, and it's a big win for DK if he dies. It's such a small loss for DK that it's not going to really too much affect their momentum or the fact that they're currently really far ahead. Looking at the gold grab, 15,000 gold lead, 20,000 experience lead, DK cruising here against Cloud9. Yeah, Sven with his Warcry 16 bonus on her, actually 14 seconds, blasting for 7 seconds. That spell is actually really underrated, but not for C9's lineup. Yeah, a lot of the, uh, at this point damage is coming from the Tinker and really the Tinker only. Maybe the single target who gets doomed in focus as well, but. Bushi edging around. He is awfully close to Pylai Dai. Yeah, he's... Neither team has vision. Somewhat alone up here. The Void is there kind of quasi backing him up. And look at this Lincoln Sphere across the board. Not just Sven, but also your Faceless Void. Both going for Lincoln's and. I think it's an okay choice. I mean, you look at that where, where Ice 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 last died at bottom. If he has a Lincoln's there, he probably lives because you can't level death and doom him in time before he time walks, so. And on top of that, they, uh, Tinker's rushing Scythe of Ice too. And Laser has cast time, whereas Scythe of Ice does not. Yeah, so breaking a Lincoln's and into a Hex or breaking a Lincoln's into a Doom takes... The cast time basically means you can't actually get it off before someone like Void either time walks out, someone like a Juggernaut can Omni Slash you or blink out. Sven can blink out, there's just all these escapes which all you need to do is make sure that you Lincoln's block that initial cycle of the Doom. So, well, we'll see DK, they're up 14 kills to 4, NV <laughs> using these Chen creeps to farm the enemy jungle, or at least put himself, did I actually farm enemy waves? He's creep skipping waves here, oh -hoo -hoo! Lamb almost catches him out. This is Pretty cheeky smart. play. Yeah, I, I... They've done it before with Visage Familiars, but yeah. I don't think I've seen it with Chen Creeps. I've been sitting here. It, it allows him to, like, when I mean, we saw him cutting waves at top lane, he's now cutting him in, in mid lane, and it makes it hard for DK to push when their kind of follow-up Creep Waves are getting wiped out, so... This is such a C9 strategy. <laughs> yeah. It's clowny, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's clowny. It works? Yeah. Eternal yeah, it does, Envy doesn't yeah. get that sort of farm without it. 
He does have a Scythe of Vice, no buyback for maybe like two minutes, and Roshan responds in yep. a minute and a half, so... Strangely enough, like sometimes the, uh, like the, the, the most far away from your base kind of places are sometimes the safest places to farm when you're behind. Like you'll farm your enemy neutrals, like farming up here, who on DK is going to be up there to gank you? If you just pop a match the machines TP attack. out, you're pretty safe. That's where everybody is now. He's maybe considering like blinking down, he's going to go for one match, is there going to be a second and he's just going to TP out, but uh, yeah. Colonel Envy doing all kinds of shenanigans this game. Still, the gold lead is not really decreasing. Um, but I mean, at the same time, they do have Tinker, one of the best high ground holders. They also have some heroes who don't scale that well to late game. Like, Brewmaster is going to fall off quite a bit. He isn't even going for an Aghanim Scepter. Not that he, he should be, like, he's just getting auras for his team and all, but he's going to fall off a bit. Doom is getting some farm, but he falls off. And then you've got Shadow Demon Chen, two very mediocre late game support. Shadow Demon is good as a purely defensive support, but he doesn't scale as far as like damage output and just uh, providing like lockdown or any sort of big team fight abilities. Man, Chen's been sitting up there for so long. And it is almost a maximum duration Roshan respawn, like 2 minutes and 50, right. 55 maybe. Make up for the last one I guess. Mm -hmm. Balances out to an even 3 minutes for the 2 Roshan respawns. So Tinker has buyback and well, actually I think he has buyback right now. So that's the other key thing that DK should be eyeing. The T2 towers is going down, it's in deny range so this Tinker play has created space. It's got an hour, also a T2 tower Dyer's for Cloud9. Top okay. top tower has kind of fallen. defenseless to this Tinker play to some extent. <laughs> some taking Rat Dota to the next level almost. This is a very Bulldog gets played. Bulldog does just this with an Aegis prop and an Envy on the Tinker saying I can do it too. But DK now gonna get Aegis which is cheese as well on third row channel. They may just try brute force the high ground. I think they do at this point. Isis Ice is actually pretty tanky. 1500 HP and cheese and Lincoln Sphere burning 2200 HP. So I think they can just straight tank through March. Ideally a pipe would uh, be up there, but blow Tinker, uh, buyback as well as Brewmaster Ultimate. And that's game, if you can actually catch him uh, on high ground without either of those. Oh, maybe she's going to be uh, back to defend and push things out a little bit here, but no chance to really catch up the Tinker. You're, you're a troll warlord here. And you mentioned the Ghost Scepter, and he did go back for it as his next item after the Scythe of Vice. And... Ghost Scepter is far more important than Dagon in this game. If he gets Chronoed and he has a Ghost Scepter on, they might actually win the fight because of that. Alright, well, we'll see where DK looks to go. They almost need like some Boots of Travelers on a couple of heroes just to deal with this push. BKB is picked up for now for Mushi on the troll. At the end of the day though, DK have four carry heroes. Like, this is going late game and you've oh, got Oh, Bernie might actually get one. doomed over here. Okay. Playing fairly fast. Ice, Ice, Ice is way too close. He's got Lincolns and Blink though, so you've got to make sure you like Scorched Earth to cancel his Blink or something here. And as you said, Ice Ice can just time walk over Chronosphere and then things go very backwards for Cloud9. And he's still at it here in the mid lane. I think Cloud9 has been in the trees more than they have been in, <laughs> in the lanes. We had like some heat graph maps for like teams and where they put their heroes, which K-Poptos has prepared for us. And this is one of those games where if you looked at this game as a standalone game, Cloud9 are never in lanes. Moon7 and Pilot Eye just spent like two minutes in these trees at bottom lane. Envy is like, not, never in lanes, he's in trees. Well, he's between lanes, I guess, but he's never in conventional lanes. Oh, they're actually smoking. They're actually gonna find him. MMY smoke pop. He's they know hiding. that Eternal Envy's over there. Ice, 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 where are you? They need you. Oh, wow, his smoke pop. I thought he knew it that did. he was there. I maybe just guessed wrong spot here. Chen will get first hit bashed and brought down the top, but that's a hero you don't care about. Look at Chen's other creep. Oh, Sven meanwhile, on bottom lane, gets a double kill. I Too think he, easy. Did he pop BKB before they could pop their spells? I think so. Yeah, think, <laughs> yeah they turned didn't, even, didn't even get his Lincolns propped. But the thing about Eternal Envy is he's killing all the creep waves in the lane, so they can't actually push, except for this one wave in middle end. Moji's actually just solo sieging, and there's no one close. There's only two heroes alive for C9. Well, TK can come and defend. He has got a hex, but he's going to come back to defend. He's looking just to creep skip waves at the time being, and uh, now DK. On the high ground, Cloud9 running out of options. They've got to come back at some point and actually take DK on the head on fire. They can't just creep skip waves for days on end. Their rack is exposed, and DK getting to work here. Not just mid lane, top lane, bottom lane, all three waves 
pushing on in. Tinkerers goes out laying down marching machines, rockets. Constant spam has got to go out as well. Already mid reactors have gone. I mean, DK strat is just down from start to finish, whereas C9, they have ways to come back, and it is a little cheesy, but their only hope is just delay the game until Tinker gets, like, six yeah. slotted. He's but still cheesing. Look, the hilarious thing is he's level 13, because he's not getting experience. He's getting far, but zero experience, because he always TPs out. Now Vlad's picked up by Jug2. So much damage. Can, like... Beyond this cheesiness, like what else can Cloud9 do to try turn this game around? Do you feel nothing really? Get ganks with Doom, which they try to do, but that doesn't work for the Lincolns because he's so fast about popping BKB. Well, let's see what else they can try and find here. Tinker's still near this top lane and <laughs> level one rearm at this point. He need, he's got inside the vice. He's got the mana pool for extra points and he should pick some up. He got level oh. thirteen though. He's got no stats, he just doesn't have the- he doesn't have the levels. Oh, there he goes. Yep. Get those levels, kill the Triceratops. There we go, 14, here we go, level 2 Riyam. And Ice has his Mushi sitting on the high ground, waiting for anybody to come. Do they have a gem on the side of DK? It looks like there is one on the Juggernaut. Okay. And Jugs of Lads hasn't come out just yet. These Chen Creeps just strategically positioned around the map. This one especially by the speed camp has just been undetected all game long. Here come DK towards the top lane. Mushi and Ice 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 and they see these heroes rotating up here. AUI will just get time off on it. Well that full staff will only delay his inevitable death as Pilot Eye is going to sit around in the trees hiding for deal. Lineup actually waiting for Eternal Envy. Korea Scout. He found him. Oh. Oh, he has Ghost Scepter anyways, he wouldn't have died. Yeah. Up. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they've seen Tiger on Burning gets doomed up, does not get the BKB off, and this is going to be a kill on Burning. They broke the Lincolns, and Doom gets denied. Top lane, and there comes your high ground initiation. They Chronosphere just to zone him out while they focus down the racks. Mushi, BKB still as Aegis as well. Ice 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 just time walks out. They want to maybe kill off Pilot Dive. It's a pretty easy kill if they can get the focus right they need. Envy now shows up as well. He's got another Hex in just a second here. Mushi, thrown up in the air by a Cyclone here. Who do they actually want to focus on? Lamb still has only Slash. Brings down the uh, Chen, and with that, DK gonna once again break onto the high ground. He's only slash on the bone seven. Doom is not gonna find a way out of this, and well, Sing Sing coming out of this split could be in some trouble. Ancient Seal, and out come the Arcane Vault for Rax as well. Rax is exposed. Four Rax advantage, obviously, three Rax advantage. They didn't get the mid range Rax. Now going the way of DK, and. Still burning, but they can still see high ground even without burning. And they got two melee erections and one range erect. That is a huge success for DK, only losing the Aegis, which was about to expire anyways, and Sven in the process. So next Aegis and Cheese is pretty much it. There's no way that Eternal Envy can just carry with a Scythe and Ghost Scepter. He needs like Dagon 5 EB, um, Dagon 5 EB and Scythe at this point. And maybe even like Shiva's or whatever. Has got 3k gold, so could buy his E-Blade momentarily or possibly just get the dang at one. But... He can't risk not having my back. Ooh, top lane, top river, Kyle I die. <laughs> well, take some hate from my size size says. He's also really good about using battle trains every single time that I size size has some uptime on the target. I size size I think is going refresher here. Why not? Oh, he will buy the E play. Okay. I think it says desperate times, desperate measures. Let's let's do go this. to the buyback and just hope for the best. It is, a, it is a nice item against all this physical damage, because not only to save yourself, but to, didn't, well, E-Blade opposing heroes to stop them dealing damage, and E-Blade teammates to try and save their life, so. Faceless Void doesn't even have BKB, actually, so you can E-Blade the Faceless Void. But as we saw last night, Ice Attacks, he doesn't even care about killing heroes. He knows what he's here for. Yep. <laughs> oh man, it's at this point it's all about for DK. It's more about sieging buildings and getting kills. Ice Ice Ice, if he can get solo kills like that with the Chronosphere, he'll take it. He doesn't care if that's like a casual oh, support. Ice 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 might TP right onto Eternal Envy. Oh, they're right next to each other. Uh oh, Envy gets the Hex, has another. I think he just wants to run. Hex and run. You're not killing this guy. On the high ground, time walk up, not in time. Oh, that was close. Ice 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 goes home, gets a refresher orb. Here we go. That's what's up. That's the mana for it. Some uh, nice finger work by Tinker there. He has to EB, 
to pop the Lincoln's sheep and then rearm and then sheep again and then blink out and then TP or sheep another time if he wants to. But still, if he doesn't get that first EB and he panics and accidentally casts sheep first, he's dead on the spot. Alrighty. Well. I just think Sand Cloud 9 is, is going to come down to, like you say, some perfect execution like that and more. They need DK to make some missteps. They need in DK this to walk into like four marches. <laughs> Let's see. He can do it as DK. You're going to see uh, have a smoked up Cloud 9 team running right at him momentarily. And DK don't spend much time grouped up as five. And that's where Cloud 9 could try and find some pickups. Wow, Pilot I smoke almost popped due to the yeah. duo of MMY and Lanham. True DK here is top three bottom. They're going for a split push here. And they think they're roaching. They leave the courier there just to scout out Roche, but it's not what's Radiance going down. Cloud9 know it. They don't attack. have their smoke get popped, and they're gonna quickly there are getting beat on. DK Dyer's knows that they're smoked around. Has been <laughs> they blink in. <laughs> Sing Sing gets a little courier snipe, and well, we'll see. Uh, top lane being pre pre pressured by Ice Ice Ice, while the uh, rest of the DK squad, for the most part, is at the bottom lane. MMY comes in. He wants this range Rax and. He may pay for this with his life. Gets posted up. There's a Chronosphere. Ice, ice, ice. Tries to go for a kill with his defensive disruption. Is there the second Chronosphere? He gets Envy. Envy will be focused down. Has he got buyback? Yes, he does. But meanwhile, bottom lane. Rax is being seized. DK going to just go for the Mega Creeps. Go for the jugular. Ice, ice, ice just being the distraction for the team. He's a decoil. Sven getting kills in the bottom lane. Not just Rax. As the Doom onto Mushi is not going to be enough. Cloud9 finally GG out. 40 minutes in. They decide they're done for. There's nothing left to do. It was just too big of a deficit, a 30k gold lead almost experience beyond 40k it looked like, and DK just cool strat, cool play, nothing Cloud9 can do. Tinker Cheese might work in pubs, but not worse, not for DK. Yeah. That was I mean, a, it was a very cool strat though. I, I don't think the initial plan was to cheese, it was more like once you got behind by like 20k gold, that's all you could do, so. Yeah, I think they expect like the Chen and Shadow Demon to do some more work, but Lana of MMI, the not dubious duo. They just did such a great job of shutting him down wherever he went. They had no